So it can be very helpful to occasionally in a, a come back, remind oneself, fall back on the, on the basic fundamental principles in our bhavana, in our formal meditation. Uh, the first one, kaya, gata, sati, mindfulness of the body, bringing awareness into the body. Uh, the second, present moment awareness, not running off into the future, not lingering in the past, but settling down here and now. Number three, the silence, mental silence, the calming down, all these mental proliferation, all these sankhavas, thoughts, ideas, plans, worries, fantasies, fears. One could add to number four, the uh, finding joy in meditation, finding beauty training oneself not to uh, enjoy the first three principles, training to enjoy being with the body, being in the body, training to enjoy the present moment, training to find beauty and silence, to be happy and enjoy the calming down of mental proliferation. First one of the Buddha has dedicated the whole Sutta, Kaya, Gata, Sati Sutta, the mindfulness connected with the body, and pointing out the huge benefits for our practice. And if we can establish awareness in the body, if we can ground our awareness in the body. Ajahn Man. He always asked uh, every one of his disciples that they make their primary meditation object with something connected with the body. For example, the Anapanasati would fulfill that as a bodily function, or the uh, element contemplation, the cemetery contemplations, the 32 parts. Uh, all that uh, would come under that. And he was quite open about what they, exactly they want to do. And the walking meditation is also concerned with the body. If one puts awareness onto you know, the feeling of walking. So he also considered it uh, very important. And so many of his disciples and made good progress with that. And uh, I feel it is even more important nowadays because in traditional societies, whether it's a little bit more than 100 years when Ajahn Man was teaching and practicing, or whether it's 2,500 years ago with the Buddha, and the people would have much less mental distraction and proliferation than we have nowadays. And the majority lived in the village and did physical work. Whereas we are often hardly doing anything and just sitting in front of screens, scrolling on the mobile phone, sitting in front of the desktop screen, and then the mind just goes into the screen and into the whole virtual universe and into proliferation thinking. It's very difficult to calm the mind down in Samatha Samadhi if it's somewhere out there in the world wide web and in thinking and proliferating. It's much, much easier when we bring the mind back, when we are aware and when we feel the body. So I think for us nowadays, where we are so much uh, lost in thinking, where that is so much emphasized in Education, we are in our jobs, we often don't have so much physical work, but again, uh, thinking, working with uh, screens, even more important uh, to pull the mind back and ground it in this physical basis. Now, this body is now what we are dragging around, these four elements constituting our body, 
as what we are carrying around as long as we are alive. We kind of almost forget about it and lose contact with that. With a second present moment awareness, as the Buddha points out in the very famous skatas of the Badeka Rata Sutta, it's actually a whole series of these suttas in Madhima Nikaya, with only small variations, and there's some deva coming and reciting it, and a monk going to the Buddha, and then someone else reciting it and remembering it, and so on. This is quite fascinating that uh, the several suttas were considered uh, important enough not to be so repetitive, but the uh, principles the mentioned in these few verses in that garden are just so important. It starts with atitang non vagameya, not to linger in the past, not to wash ahead into the future. Matitang tangpahinang, what what is in the past, that is already gone. We can't change it anyhow. So why do we get so attached and worked up about it? Can't can't be changed. Has happened. Napatikankya nagatam, and not to hanker about the future. Do you like thinking and proliferating and planning your future? <laughs> and hoping that it turns out and that it comes different anyhow. And then uh, already the next morning something has happened and then there are plans for the whole next year and you can just immediately cancel them and start planning again to some other unexpected event occurs and we, we got stuck on that and we think if we can do it smarter now that we can all plan it out uh, very important of course and, uh, occasionally we do have to plan we cannot live all the time always only in the present moment certainly not in lay life and not even in the monk's life occasionally it is also helpful to look back into the past and to learn of one's mistakes, to use wisdom, understanding, investigation, and one can learn a lot and apply wisdom. But it doesn't have to be done all the time, and in particular it is not helpful to do that if you try to calm your mind and settle down and develop samadhi, samatha, calmness, concentration, meditation, and then uh, to develop a uh, deep, profound insight, wisdom, and form the meditation at that moment. And if you try to plan the future or figure out the past, that becomes an uh, obstruction. Occasionally, for sure, and we quite deliberately decide mindfully now there's something in the past I have to look at, investigate, try to understand it. And a certain amount of planning is unavoidable but not when you now have one hour of meditation or maybe even only half an hour for the whole day. Or even if you have a couple of hours of formal meditation during the day. Now this is not the time for learning from the past or figuring out the future. It's good to make a clear resolution when you sit down. It's very powerful and one can use that when you start your formal meditation, you sit down or you start walking, and you make it a little bit almost like a little ritual, like here, and we bow before we finally start. This is something very special, the most special thing you can do in the universe, and developing bhavana and putting your whole energy and wisdom and dedication into the act of training your mind without any other duty you know, for that period of time and then you resolve you know, for this one hour, for this 20 minutes, whatever you sit or walk, you know, uh, no past, no future. I figure that out. You, know, you can even give yourself some time after it if you notice you know, that there's so many pressing issues coming up and you feel I really have to figure that, you know, okay, 
give yourself some 10 minutes afterwards where you can think about the future no? and then you can remind yourself no, not, not now it's so important to settle down here and now time is now place is here and then now is a knowing as Lumpur Sumedho likes to say And uh, if we start off with meditation, it can often be quite difficult. We are so used, and we are creatures of habit. And as we are very used to constantly planning the future, to think about the past, and it takes time to gradually make the mind used to be in the present moment and to and discover the beauty. And one of the great beauties of the present moment that uh, for most people, 90% or more of the problems are immediately gone. It's a little bit different if we have a chronic pain condition. Admittedly, no, then it's a little bit different. And uh, if you have a chronic pain condition, no, that is also there and painful here and now. But if one doesn't have that, no, if we look at, no, for most people, if you look at no, what really worries and troubles you, what do you suffer from? If we investigate that, it tends to be something in the past which is already over and which we now remember and agonize about and drive ourselves nuts. But if we are here now while we are meditating, uh, this thing is often not an issue. It becomes a problem and painful and suffering only if we allow ourselves to remember it and then to engage with it and whinge about it and complain and what's so unfair and why me? Why me? Why do I have to undergo that? And the same with the future. No? You probably have got quite a few uh, worries about the future. Uh, with your job, with your uh, partner, with the kids, with your education, with the exam, with whatever with the house you're building, with the mortgage. But how much of that is actually really a problem right now, here and now? If you just sit there and you're breathing, and again, if you investigate, I think you will find it's actually not a problem here and now. It's something that may occur in the future. I can drive us completely nuts. So one way of discovering the beauty of the present moment and enjoying it is by realizing that so much of all our problems and all our suffering is in the past or the future. And we can abandon that by the simple act of simply being aware in the present moment here and now. And even for this one exception, if we do have a physical pain which is present here and now, even there, if we look at it more closely, a lot of the suffering is the thinking about I may have this pain also tomorrow, I may have it for the rest of my life, uh, it may never go away, it may actually get worse, how do I cope with that pain? If it gets worse, if it doesn't go away, what if that is actually something serious? What if that is cancer? What if that means I have to die soon? And so on. Even there, a major part of the suffering in the present moment is actually not in the present moment with the pain, but is in the thinking and uh, further proliferation about it. But uh, the majority of our other everyday problems are often completely gone in the year now. And once we can see that mindfully with wisdom, then we can get a real a delight. We can find real delight in the here and now. We become... Um, you know, there's something that we always want to come back to. And I think the walking meditation is a great one for uh, helping with these two things. 
getting into awareness of the physical body, you know, because walking is quite easy to feel. And if you are sitting and watching the breath, that's a very subtle thing. It's a bodily function, but it's in the, one of the very subtle ones, in the wind element is the most subtle. But if you're walking, in particular, if you get old like me, and by now I can really feel the body whoop, whoop. <laughs> It's no longer jump, jump when you're young. But even if you're young, there's quite a strong sensation walking. And one can walk in a fast. If you find it difficult to stay with the feeling in the body, you know, just, just walk quite fast. Because you know, it's, it's almost natural you know, that the mind then gets engaged with it. And many people, even if they're not doing the kind of formal meditation, they have that you know, as an instinct, even if they're not doing any um, meditation in any spiritual system, they may just go for a long walk if they want to calm down. And walking can also make it a bit easier to stay in the present moment, because if you're sitting in the present moment, it may be a little bit boring sometimes, <laughs> and until the breath that develops you know, all these beautiful aspects and you can see that and you can perceive you know, the beauty and the pleasure in the breath. It may appear a little bit boring, but when you're walking, you know, there's still more happening in the present moment. So it may be a little bit easier again to stay in the present moment while walking. And then silence. It's not necessary in a document. I find that quite intriguing sometimes. You can have this uh, viral YouTube video you know, with hundreds of millions of views and uh, hundreds of thousands of comments, but people still feel that they have to leave some comment there. Or even they feel that they have to uh, comment on another person's comment. So you're having the one of 500 comments commenting on one of 500,000 comments onto this video. And uh, I'm always wondering whether they think who's going to read that. Now the person publishing that will find it difficult to read so 100,000 comments. And it's just some urge. You know, we want to comment, we want to say something. We want to put our own five cents towards it. And even if you don't do that on YouTube or on, uh, or the other social media, it's you know, uh, quite similar that we have to put out and you know, giving our own five cents. But it's the same uh, mentally. We cannot just sit there and breathe, and you know, we have to now comment on how we meditate. I was really stupid, and I can't meditate, and you know, why am I so distracted, or this is too boring. This is constantly commentary warning. But just like a, and a commentator, when, when you watch a footy game or cricket game or something, and there's this and the guy, and his job is to constantly talk about what you're already seeing, anyhow. And we have this uh, commenter, and they're operating in our mind, they're constantly wanting to say and comment on anything that is happening and proliferate about and talk about it. So it's uh, very beneficial in it to learn to enjoy silence. It's a great way of training sometimes in conversations. When you join a conversation and maybe it's a topic you feel quite passionately about, and maybe some people in that conversation have the very opposite view of you and they say things which are completely wrong in your conviction and opinion. Do you find it easy to just listen and not say anything? <laughs> it's amazingly difficult. And if that occasion ever comes up, it's a great way of training not to 
overcome this tendency in having to put one's own five cents and just listening to these different views which you feel are all completely wrong and, and silly and we immediately want to cut in and correct now this is just nonsense it's so difficult you know, to keep quiet, not to comment but if you can do it in that situation then you may also be able to do it when you are just feeling and experiencing the breath and the here now Well, there can be great beauty in silence. You know, the, the Buddha absolutely loved silence. There's one thing you know, where he often uh, actually did speak out you know, and told people off you know, if they were loud, even the monks. Uh, so uh, learning training the mind to calm down all this activity. Because in meditation what we are training is awareness, just knowing, not thinking, talking, commenting. One doesn't have to think and proliferate and bring up notions in order to develop wisdom and insight. It's possible to know non-verbally when the Buddha was sitting under the Bodhi tree and he later described the dependent origination, this doesn't mean that he was sitting under the Bodhi tree and thinking, Avicca, Patriya, Sankara, Sankara, Patriya, Vinyanang, and so on. This is, it was, was on a much more, on a much deeper level, just uh, watching dependent origination in both modes and happening, knowing it. So learning to know, to be aware, to be mindful without thinking, without bringing up notions, concepts. And the best way of practicing these three principles, the connecting, grounding, awareness in the body, being in the present, here and now, and calming down, the silencing the mind, not commenting, but silent. The best way of developing that is by learning to enjoy it. One can actually learn to enjoy things. It's not like often we naively think there's something I like and something I don't like. It's a quite a funny, naive view, and I had that myself. But then uh, over time you notice it actually changing, changing anyhow. and. One can uh, deliberately train oneself to like or dislike certain things. Quite fascinating, you know, the faculty of perception. And many people only you know, like certain music because that is you know, the in thing, you know, that is what the peer group considers to be good music. And then that's what you listen, even if you actually don't really like it, but you convince yourself. Or certain things now are considered you know, silly or bad or in, uh, in one's peer group and then one learns you know, not to like it, to dislike it. So we can uh, deliberately do that and you know, train ourselves to enjoy silence, train ourselves you know, to really like and delight in the present moment. And once we notice you know, that all the problems tend to be gone in the present moment, you know, then uh, it's quite easy to learn to enjoy it. And training oneself, you know, how much better it feels. What does it feel like you know, uh, binging on the internet, playing all night games or binge watching videos or whatever? Or what does it feel like you know, if you're really in a, a walking or even just doing some exercise and being really in the body? So it's usually much more uh, satisfying and a much deeper sense of you know, happiness and contentment. So my recommendation um, in meditation, never forgetting these three principles connected with joy. Uh, learning to enjoy 
awareness of the body, grounding oneself in the body you know, joyfully, learning to be happy in the present moment here and now, and learning to take delight in silence rather than in mental activity. Just be silent and to know, to be aware in silence. Still a few minutes left, if anyone likes to comment.